All right, this will be my first introduction to this uh, the engine build. I'm going to make a long video of the whole thing, but I thought I'd start out with kind of a real quick introduction. This is my 51 308 six cylinder flathead uh, on my Hudson Hornet. Uh, I've had uh, the engine. Uh, it ran, I guess, when uh, I bought it. Supposedly he had he had gotten it running, but uh, there's a piston ring broke off, so he stopped driving it. Uh, I got the engine, decided to just do a complete teardown and rebuild of it. Uh, dipped it, stripped it, had some machine work done to it. I'll descri describe that later on. I had the 7X valves and valve job put in, so I'll, I'll describe that in a different video because there's been a lot of questions on that. Uh, I haven't even, the only thing I got done so far, like, I got the crank laid and I got the valves uh, set. So uh, I really haven't gotten that far into the engine yet, so I've been, you know, I've been lax in building uh, video content for what I'm doing here for those guys that, that care. Um, so what I did do too is I also let me um, let me see if I can get this turned without just breaking the camera here. I did do the Glipdol paint. Uh, we talked. I saw that in a lot of like the message boards and a lot of the things. Uh, some guys says it helps. Some guys say it don't. I mean. From what everything I read, they did this to the, to the engines themselves. Here, I'll give you a better look, look at it. Uh, it's the idea is that with this paint, it helps the oil drain down to the pan faster than trying to, you know, kind of stick to the walls of the inside of the block. Which I can kind of see that. I can understand how that would be a thing because uh, when I went to paint it, you know, it was um, a little bit of a better, better light. You know, when I went to paint it, you could really tell the difference between when the paint was on it and, you know, as far as the roughness of the walls of the block compared to what it was, you know, from the factory, from the, from the casting. So I really does, I do really do think it will help things out. Um, so I'm glad I did it. Uh, it wasn't too hard. I just did it with a brush. Uh, I did get the crank laid already. Got the bearings in, um, get the seals in. Uh, it's kind of gloppy. I'm going to go back and clean up some of this, R, R, this RTV, but I did the rope seals in these gaps. Like I had, uh, that was kind of fun, using a drift and a hammer and some ropes. Got that on there. The, the, the juiciness you see everywhere is just assembly fluid. I have that everywhere. I, I tend to goop and gop that stuff on as much as possible. There's no reason not to. So, yeah, so that's the bottom of the engine with the crank in. Uh, next step will be pistons and cam and lifters. I got to, uh, I'm still waiting for the cam to come in, so I'm not sure when I'm going to get to that. But, uh, yeah, here's a nice little introduction to the, to the 308 build and uh, hopefully hopefully we'll we'll get going on it uh jeff perkins down in indiana did all the machine work for me he uh ported out the uh the valves here uh to give me a little more room uh had the bores 60 over i had to put a sleeve in one of them because a crack he repaired all the cracks in the block for me i had several cracks most of them are in between the intake and exhaust valve, and I think there's a couple of them that kind of went from, uh, you know, from like from here to here, sort of thing. So they're they're just little cracks, and he was able to weld them and, and, and take care of them for me. So it all turned out really really well. Um, I've already got the valves installed except for one because I'm missing a retainer. And I'm going to show you guys later in the video how I did that because that was kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, and you can kind of see I'm, I've been kind of testing different paints to see what I like, uh, so I haven't done that yet. I haven't got the frost plugs in it yet, to be honest with you. The only thing I did make sure I put in was this big, long uh, water jacket thing, and I had a whole conversation with guys about this. So this is, uh, I'm guessing it's copper or brass. Big, long water jacket thing that goes all the way to the back of the motor. It was fun getting it out when the motor was all crudded up, but uh, yep, putting it back in. I'm guessing this is just kind of helps the distrib distribution of water within the block. Um, I did have, I've got the crank in, uh, let me pause this and I'll turn it over and you guys can see what I did with the crank. But uh, you know what, I'm going to, really quick, I want to show you a close up of these, of this port job, what he did. So I'm going to walk over to my 54 here in a second and I'll show you, uh, what the 54 looks like, which is similar to what the, this is my 51. So, and I'll show you what the difference is. So just taking notice of all this, this kind of, um, you know, the, this material that he took away and I'll show you what he did on the other side. So just to give you an idea, this is the 54 308, which I, from what I understand, was actually uh, milled out a little bit more than the 51s were. So they had already kind of gotten the word that, you know, if you mill this area out, um, you can get better performance. So that, that's what I remember reading somewhere. So my 51 wasn't even, uh, not even this much material was missing, but you can kind of see really, really well uh, 
uh, what the difference is. So that's that's the 54 block 308, uh, like I said, which is probably uh, more than my 51 was. I, I don't remember hardly any of that being uh, done for that. So sorry I didn't get you a good before and after picture, but I figured showing you what my 54 looks like compared to the 51 new one would help kind of visualize that, you know, that 7X that they talk about. And of course, the, and the valves are bigger too. So I probably should have pointed out as well. The valves are much, much bigger intake and exhaust uh, for the other one. So you can kind of see the, uh, in between the valves too, there's not really much material taken out. And I'll show you, and you know what, I'll just show you that. And I'll walk over to the 51 without seeing too much of my mess. And then see my Ford 8N and then pieces. All right. And then the difference. So you guys, hope, hope you can kind of see that in the video, the difference here. They really, uh, you know, this all this area right here is all machined out and smoothed off. So that's the big difference between those 7X valves and what the valves were before.